I have no good excuse for wearing moose antlers. Uh, except that this journal that wants to be read is called Blessings and Benefits of Your Pain. And it's like, I'm going through this. These are all over the, the board as far as when they were written. This is from April 13th, 2010, the first one of that day. The Mayan day was 9 Earth. Uh, but they all seem to be lately about anger and pain and darkness and stuff. So I figured I might as well have fun recording it. My heart is somewhat heavy. Now, how can somebody with antlers like this have a heavy heart? Good question. May I extol to you the blessings and benefits of a heavy heart, please? It is to your advantage. I hope you will not tune me out. I even put my antlers on to get you to come out and play with me. We have many among us who believe it is the path of light to ignore or to refuse to look at or acknowledge the darkness. This is both understandable and not always right, or shall I say, not always the most useful way to accelerate one's path. So, please enter into heart with me. Just drop your attention down into your chest. That, that is all. Now, from here, realize that both darkness and light are necessary to the 3D experience. One does not exist or is not visible absent the other. There is no rainbow without both clouds and light. Just one or the other is incomplete. Well, it is in 3D where we find ourselves. It is not the most useful thing to ignore half of our experience, half and a necessary half of our reality. Yes, we are free to do this, but it will stultify the growth and development of the soul beyond a certain point. There comes a point at which the darkness must be faced to move on. And my little scroll thing's giving me a hard time here. Are you at that point? Have you felt stuck for a while? If so, perhaps you will find this useful. It can't hurt. <laughs> now, let us remain in heart to get the fullest benefit. When we begin to realize that the mind is not the vehicle that will take us to the heights of spiritual attainment and development, we are at first surprised. Many of us don't even realize that this reliance on mind is the reason for our path's stultification. It just doesn't enter the mind to question the mind, after all. Mind is not foolish. At some point, however, we generally begin discovering the heart and the power that resides there, both to transport us to, excuse me, the power that resides there to transport us both to marvelous realms and into a fuller awakening than the mind can deliver. The quote, with all of thy getting, get understanding, does not refer to the mind. It refers to the heart. This is, at first, a new territory to people, steeped as we are in mind culture, especially here in the civilized Western world. It is shocking to even contemplate that mind is not the way to wisdom. There is generally serious resistance to the concept and to the experience. Hopefully, though, we all get to meet someone like me and get a good taste of the possibilities of the magic to be found in the kingdom of heart and our possibility to reign over our own life there, to be our own king or queen, once again, a sovereign being, ruler, over our own domain. Hey, I think I'll have to 
change my headgear here. There we go. Okay. This is the place where no blame or finger pointing even exists, where each one takes full responsibility not only for what she says and does, but even for whatever happens to her, seemingly delivered through the hands of another or of the world even. What a wild thought. At first, it makes no sense. We generally run away from this any number of times. Our path stalls and stagnates. However, and eventually, most of us begin to face the facts, the reality that maybe, just maybe, there is benefit here. Soon, the sense of it begins to seep in. That is, if we keep spending time in the heart, that there's blessing to be had here. The understanding both dawns and then grows the more time we spend just quietly present within it's amazing. We are stunned. Over a fairly short time, we begin to feel as if the weight of the world lifted from us. We begin to grow lighter and happier by the day, by the hour, sometimes by the minute. Time begins to lose all meaning of any kind, uh, all meaning as any kind of limitation, and we grow by leaps and bounds. Uh, this is the honeymoon, my friends. It is lovely, and it will continue, but not unalloyed. Once one has matured enough in heart to be ready, some of the darkness begins to appear. Most are tempted to run here. We would rather not face anything difficult, anything dark, or involving pain. Is that right? Well, why would we want to do that? to feel pain. Have you thought about it? Have you listened to any of the work of Eckhart Tolle as he extols the virtue and value of just being present with whatever arises? Have you experienced some of that? Have you let it arise and not run from it, perhaps into distraction, into busyness, which is most people's escape, just pure useless busyness? If you haven't run from me here, that's a good sign. It means you're ready. There's a maturity here that mustn't be skipped. People don't awaken without this. Actually, refusal to deal with the darkness is what is holding so many of us back from enlightenment. That sounds funny, doesn't it? Well, it is and it isn't. It really will hold you back. You see, the darkness is there for a very good reason. It comes bearing gifts, always. No exceptions. Do let that sink in for just a moment. The darkness comes bearing gifts. The gifts are there. They are just hidden away under the guise of the darkness. It's like they're wrapped in the wrapping paper called darkness. You don't get the gift if you don't open the package. And you have to sit still for that. You have to be willing to entertain some pain, some challenges. Just to sit with them is usually all that is needed. We don't have to do anything to go and try to fix anything. <laughs> Nothing is broken. The darkness is there for a purpose. It is not a mistake. It is not broken. Nothing is broken, including you. Just be with the pain when it arises. Just be willing to look at it. Be willing to feel at least some of the feelings. You can back off any time if they're too much. You may limit the blessings that can flow through. Sometimes you make them go back into hiding when you do that when you stop the pain from arising. Staying in the heart, I found, is the secret, my friends. It really is. No, it won't hurt any less, but it will hurt smarter. 
you will begin to see the sense of it and the beautiful reasons for this pain arising if you just let it flow. Allow yourself to feel whatever comes up. Okay, I've gone long here. Ten minutes is not much. I may have to move to Google videos at some point or somewhere where you can go long. Sometimes to take you where you need to go takes a bit more than just 10 minutes, but I'll stop here. I'll just say, please watch me and be alert to the times that I share pain that I'm going through and look to the benefits and the blessings that flow. They are there. Just notice. That's enough. Be gentle with you. No forcing, please. It won't help. Just let it arise gently.